please join me in the Pledge to Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Good evening. Welcome to the <clears throat> April 8th, 2019 Selectman's Meeting. Tonight, um, <clears throat> under <clears throat> New business, we have number one, discussion of current town manager contract. That's going to be uh, put aside for next week. Okay. Um, moving on, we have public comment. Anyone wishing to have public comment, please join us. I am a very poor public speaker, but I just wanted to comment on how uh, upset I am at receiving this letter uh, that my trash is going to be discontinued because we, our property is in the form of a family condominium. Uh, I have passed out letters uh, yeah. with my justification for asking for an exemption to this ruling. And that's all I have. To, oh, and my address is 609 Ocean Boulevard. <laughs> Okay. And I am a yeah. resident. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I just want to um, uh, mention that um, this isn't a response to um, the lady speaking, but we are going to have our uh, meeting where we're discussing the condo um, uh, situation that everyone's gotten the letters and anyone wants to combat. We're going to have a full discussion of that on April 22nd here in this room at seven o'clock. Sir, would you like to join us? Your name and address, please. And good evening. Uh, my name is David Skenecki, and I live at 71B Esker Road okay, we got you. Uh, with my wife, Kathy, and uh, her mom, Ethel Doherty, who's the owner of 71B es Esker Road. Uh, she's 92 years old, and they take care of uh, most of the housekeeping. I take care of uh, working with the town and, and, and city. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my comment is, is similar to this lady's. Um, uh, I very carefully read the letter of April 2nd uh, signed by town manager Welch. Uh, and I spoke to um, uh, administrative assistant Christina Mm -hmm. Ostrich? Yeah. Christina Osman this morning uh, about the same. And um, our home is classified officially as a condominium. I'd call it a, a twin. Uh, some people call it a two family. Some people call, call it a duplex. Okay. But, but that's, that's what it is. Uh, and uh, um, in the letter, Apparently, we were getting uh, our garbage and recycling collected over the last several years, in large part because of uh, some misunderstanding of the uh, condominium bylaws. And now, uh, after the town has looked at those condominium bylaws, uh, the significant page uh, of which you did send to us and highlighted, uh, you've indicated uh, that, that the bylaws state that we are obliged, come July 1st, to mm. pay for that. And uh, if, the, if the bylaws state that, I, I really have no problem with that. I mean, if the bylaws state that I'm obliged to pay for something, that's, that, that's mm. part of the game. Uh, rules are rules. But I believe the town has misinterpreted the bylaws. and. Um, and what's important is two definitions in the bylaws. Number one, the unit. Uh, the unit is, as I think you know, the, the building itself, the mm -hmm. wood frame structure, cellar, uh, first floor, second floor, and garage. And there are two such units. Uh, the common area, very importantly, is the rest of the property beyond the unit, period. Mm -hmm. When I think of common area, I think of swimming pools, uh, I think of weight training rooms. But our common area is simply the backyard, side yards, driveway, and the front yard. 
And what was highlighted in this letter, and this is really what needs to be addressed, I think. It says, the owner shall pay for water, sewer, garbage collection, snow removal, lawn care, electrical, telephone, and gas and other necessary utility service for the common area. I'd be happy to do that for the common area. I, 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 I think we generate from the common area about a, a half or maybe a quarter or a half a bucket per year of garbage, you know, fertilizer bags. But if, if that's the case, somebody has to finance the garbage collection for our unit according to, according to uh, the terms of this agreement. And so I think, I think what this is saying, and um, I think what this bylaw is saying, and uh, uh, the, the spirit of this change is suggesting, is that the unit will be covered by the town. And the common area will be covered by me. And, and that's what I ask you to look at. I'll pay for the common area, hmm. for the garbage related to the common area. Thank you. Or actually, my mother-in-law will pay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any other public comment? Thank you. Can I'm, I I yes, please join us. OK. Thank you. Thank you. We don't uh, respond I to the uh, public comment. Correct. I know this isn't one of the trash nights, but this is fresh in my mind, and it's a tack that hasn't been talked about much in the last few weeks. Uh, we've had these current carts for, what, seven, eight years, I'm guessing, because they got the, the swing arms and the one-guy trucks. Um, it's a good thing for keeping guys from being injured, and it's, it's handy, but it's not a very wind-friendly program. Uh, um, <laughs> I've had this discussion many times over the last few years with various people at Public Works and the drivers and if you're clever and, and, you get, and you get it right you can jury rig the lids on these with a bungee cord so they're fairly wind resistant but they'll still pop open when they dump them. But that's depending on people to be clever and want to do it themselves and I happen to be home Friday so I could stand my recycling cart up every time it tipped over mm. before anything went too far. Unfortunately, many of my neighbors were at work and I spent a good part of that day and Saturday picking up their stuff in my yard and that didn't, what didn't blow out into the marsh and into the water. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a mess. Um, I don't want to argue with people, but we've had this problem ongoing long enough so somebody ought to proactively be looking about going forward addressing it. Mm -hmm. it, it, nothing's been, been done. I mean, I even thought today looking at it, you might be able to retrofit them with like the old type screen door roller catch might be enough to snap it down mm -hmm. and still pop open when the things are dumped. But I, I know people are overworked and undermanned at public works, but this has been going on a long time. And I think it ought to be looked at if we want to keep our town looking good. Mm -hmm. it, it's just, or going forward, we've got to look at a different system or different carts that are a little more wind, wind resistant. I mean, a 32-gallon metal can had a snap-on lid, and if it did blow over in a hurricane, most of the time the lid stayed on. Yeah. These things barf out everything that's in there, and the recycling you can't even have enclosed in a bag to keep it together. It's got to be loose, mm -hmm. and that's how it goes, loose. So I hope put a bug in your ear amongst all the other trash problems. I don't know what I'm supposed no, to talk. Mrs. Walsley, we, we, we do not respond. Wait a minute. No, we do not respond. Excuse me. Mrs. Walsley, we do not respond. Stop banging that at me. That's I'm it, asking Mrs. Mr. Tilton to identify You're not even going to ask him anything himself. you go out into the other I room. asked him to identify Sweet. himself for okay, the secretary. I will take care of that, Mrs. Walsley. All right. All Peter, Peter Tilton, 125 Landing Road. Just follow the trash trail. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, any other public comment? The other thing is on April 15th is when we're going to discover, uh, talk about the trash and the recycling for the business community, both all through Hampton and at the beach. Next, we have announcements and community calendar. Mrs. Wolseley. 
No, nothing at the moment. <coughs> Yeah, I'd just like to say that the Cable Committee, I, I said last week that we had the results of the survey in that was online and we had the results of the written survey that was in. And uh, we've decided after talking with the uh, town manager and stuff that we also should have one public meeting to make sure that people have had the opportunity to voice their opinion on the cable and what they think should be done. So we will be planning a public uh, hearing for that, a public meeting, and it mostly, most likely within the next couple of weeks. Okay, yeah, just let are. us know, let Christina know, and we'll put yes, that we on will. the agenda. Rusty. No, the only thing I have is uh, the, uh, the meeting next week on the 15th. Uh, I've heard from a number of business people, and they're, uh, they're trying to look at ways to reduce, and look at ways to help, and work with the t town work as we continue to work through this. So it's very encouraging. Thank you. Um, 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 next, we have approval of minutes. March 25th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of March 25th. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Next we have the minutes of April 1st, 2019. I'll make a, a motion with one correction. That was the uh, non-public session ones. Mm -hmm. That there was halfway through that meeting a motion to adjourn. It was duly seconded, and we never w cut to it, but I'd like that into the minutes. Okay. Any other uh, considerations? I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? <coughs> Unanimous. Next, we have the consent agenda, and on that is conservation appointments, Shaw, Swank, Tilton, and Curo. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next, we have appointments. Yes. Mm -hmm. First is uh, Director of Recreation and Parks, Renee Boudreau. Good evening. Good evening, Renee. Good evening. Um, so I'm here on my second week quarterly update uh, for the year. And our biggest announcement I have right now is this coming Saturday is our annual Easter egg dig. Um, <laughs> we didn't do a whole lot of advertisement this year, and if social media has anything to say, there are upwards of 44,000 interested people in coming to the well, <laughs> Easter egg dig. So hopefully that doesn't happen, but uh, it, the, the word is out there, and we're getting calls daily from all over the place. So um, we may have to relook at our number of eggs we bring on a yearly basis to this event. So um, that's our biggest, most exciting thing. We also have a gentleman in town, uh, Max Ronner Bland, who is going to be spearheading a beach cleanup directly after the event mm -hmm. to hopefully pick up all the eggs that the kids don't find. Um, and that was kind of brought to the attention. The state was wondering what kind of plan we had, and we had a couple concerned people last year. So this young man stepped up, and he's been doing beach cleanups twice a month. Um, pretty much, I think, for the last three or four months. Um, so he's avid in the ocean cleanup business, and we are glad to have him on board. A um, couple ongoing projects right now. We still have a fence project at Eaton Park that's hopefully going to be accomplished by mid-April. Um, the location of it is really soft uh, out in the outfield, so it, we kind of need Mother Nature to be on our side and dry up a little bit so they can get some trucks out there to put the fencing up. Um, and of course we have the Kids Kingdom project which everybody knows is kind of on hold right now. We did mention mm -hmm. Public Works yeah. asked that we hold off on that so we're putting together kind of like a little info uh, packet to put out there and we're probably going to send it out to some of the schools just to get the word out there that it's on hold for the moment a little longer than we anticipated. Um, May 11th we have our annual fishing derby. Um, <laughs> That goes on, I call it on sale, it's free, but we start registrations on Monday. Uh, and that's for any kid up to eighth grade. Usually um, we do prizes for the biggest, the smallest, and we always come up with some other miscellaneous stuff in between there. Uh, and that's at Bachelor Park, oh, casting contest, thank you, Rusty. And um, <laughs> right across from Toll Farm Market. So other than that, we are doing some work upcoming uh, at the Rotary Park across from the library, the playground there has two or three pieces of equipment that has 
been rotting. Mm -hmm. um, some aren't up to safety standards anymore. Yeah. So there's the reason I'm letting people know this is happening is with the Kids Kingdom project kind of on hold. I just want them to know that I'm not taking it out to make sure there's no place for any kid to play that's legit safety hazards right. and money to replace this equipment is not in the budget at the moment. Um, but I'm working with Amanda at the library and she's okay. um, thinking up some ways and she may be able to come okay. up with some ways to replace some of the equipment there uh, coming up. So we got that project also in the works. Um, and then we also are working with UNH on a needs assessment, which we're going to be starting in May. Um, and that's going to entail a couple of uh, community meetings. They're going to probably do a survey and they're going to be doing um, some work around the fields and the parks to see kind of what's needed, what's outdated, what needs work. Um, just so I can get an idea of where the interest in the community is also yeah. on what they think they need. And so I have a report they're talking about uh, mid-August um, to get a report from them and then I'll, I can present it or they may want to come present it to the selectmen. So, um, And then other than that, I know on the uh, agenda it mentioned the um, purchasing policy waiver for some tree work down at Tuck. I went out, walked the park with Chris Jacobs and two tree companies with him and then I walked one myself with another company. Um, two of them were over $24,000 and then one of them came in just over $18,000. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a company that the town uses a lot and it's a company that does yeah, really could. quality work. Yeah. And I believe I'm trying to get it done before baseball season starts, mm -hmm. before summer yeah. camp starts. And I know they usually pull through and do a good job. So I'm asking for a, a little bit of leniency on that one so we can get that project started. Questions? Mrs. Yeah. Wolves. Renee, what what kind of tree work? Trimming, uprooting, cutting part down? What? We, the biggest concern is the perimeter of Tuck Field. Literally, as you pull into the park, there's a toddler park there. Mm -hmm. The trees along the property line all the way up to Sacred Heart, uh -huh. and then over on Tuck Field near Ross, on the back side of Ross Colony yeah. Court, yeah. all the way over to Eaton Park. Got there you. are trees that are hanging, huge limbs that are hanging over the fields, um, which are concerns for flag football, for HYA yeah. baseball, for any soccer program. So it's pretty much trimming, I mean, getting rid of some of the... There's, it's mostly trimming. There are some trees, and I'm not going to know the species off the top of my head. I think silver <laughs> oak, possibly, I think, yeah. or sil silver maple. There are some trees that are just going to come out totally because they're okay. horrible and they always break and they're dangerous. So you've got to mix. But so, it's smart to get ahead of the curve. Good. Yeah, and we have a map of all the ones that are coming out. And Excellent. So. Yeah, good report, good work. I'm glad to hear about the cleanup on the beach because that's pretty important with all that. Have you coordinated with the Rotary on, on getting uh, equipment? Thank you, Mr. Waddell. Would you like me to do that? You, you can do that if you'd like. Thank you, I will. I'll take care of it. Because we, we redid that park, what, about five, six years ago? You updated that park, yes. Yeah, a big, a big job there. Yeah. And, and the other thing I just wanted to mention, I don't know if people have seen it on social media, but I, I believe it was the recreational director who was dancing around in a, in a rabbit's uh, outfit. And I think people should look and see it. Just for the record, that was not the recreation director, but thank you for pointing that out. But I did want to also thank Campton Rotary. He did bring up a good point. They also donated some funds towards the Easter egg dig this year so we can help get some more prizes, which our Easter egg dig being one of the biggest, we didn't offer as many prizes for the kids. So I went to a nearby one and volunteered to help and was a little upset at our prize package that we give out. So we're going to up the ante this year with some help from the Rotary. So. Oh, that's cute. <coughs> good. Rusty. So the uh, the trees is that in the budget? Is that in it was part of the Warren article. It was part of the, that, that passed. Yes. I'll make a motion that we accept the bid of eighteen thousand four hundred. I'll second. Urban tree. Yeah. Correct. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. And um, I was just going to say um, on. August 25th is when we're having the pig roast, which is a ways out there, but I understand that um, there won't be any problem with uh, 
accessing the area at that time. Um, main, the pig roast is always on a Saturday, but um, Mr. Welch has assured me that they'll be, it won't be an impediment to the uh, getting to the pig roast. Yeah, Public Works did mention that they would have access in or around the park one way or the other, so. Thank you very much well, for your it'll, report. It'll be a problem um, for the pig. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Okay. Any other uh, things you would like to bring up? Thank you very much. Thank you, Renee. Next on the for appointments, we have Carl McMorran for Aquarian. There's some slides to show. Should be. Thank you, Carl McMorran, Aquarian Water Company. With me is John Hurley, he our uh, vice president for <clears throat> water quality, and Mark Voice, who's a senior engineer in our engineering department. And this is our uh, sort of our routine quarterly update of uh, major things that are going on at the water company. Uh -huh. There we go. <clears throat> Hit F5. Pardon? Just hit F5. F5. <clears throat> Ta da. <clears throat> you can go to the next slide, please. I just uh, agenda what we want to cover tonight, give you an update on the uh, PFAS and an update on our uh, major projects. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Hurley. Good evening. Thank you very much for the opportunity to give you this update. I'm going to cover PFAS <clears throat> um, and I have two primary messages. One is, so this is a, a graph that shows the six locations in the distribution system across the three towns uh, that we've been monitoring uh, for PFAS compounds. And what I've shown here is uh, uh, the last year and a half worth of monitoring since uh, October of 2017. So there's 15 data points for each of the six stations, 90 data points in all. And this shows the total of all the PFAS compounds. We detect, you know, eight or nine PFAS compounds max. And this shows uh, that uh, the levels continue to be relatively stable. This is the water that, this is the tap water, the water mm -hmm. that's delivered to the customers. There is some variation that occurs depending on what the mixture of water is at that point in the, dis in the system, how much Winnicott, how much Mill Road, et cetera, and whether or not uh, well six is in service. And we're minimizing the use of well six. We did have it on for about two and a half months last year, and the high green bars reflect uh, the presence of the well six water. The second <clears throat> major message is that our water has very low PFAS levels compared to the proposed maximum contaminant yeah. levels from the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. Mm -hmm. So on this graph, uh, the orange uh, bars are the proposed maximum contaminant levels. Uh, so the bars with the lowest number are, are the ones of the highest concern. They have the lowest limits. Mm. Our water cannot exceed 23 parts per trillion for PFNA under the proposal. Yeah. Uh, you don't see uh, the blue bars. The dark blue bar is the maximum that we've detected, and the light blue bar is the average that we've detected. Uh, and you don't see any bars for PFNA, and that's because we haven't detected it in any of those 90 samples that we've tested. Uh, so the, the com compound of most concern, according to DES, is not present in the water. Uh, the next two are PFOA and PFAS, and we've discussed those a lot. Uh, DES has set a limit of 38 uh, for PFOA, which is lower than EPA's limit of 70. And they've set uh, a level of 70 per PFAS, which is EPA's action level uh, limit. Uh, you can see that our results are very low compared to the 38 and the 70. The next bar is uh, the combination of PFOA plus PFOS. Mm. That limit, EPA and New Hampshire, 70. Uh, 
our levels, the max is just above 10 and the average is down below five. And then the uh, fourth compound that DES uh, has proposed to regulate is PFHXS and that they've s uh, proposed a limit of 85 mm -hmm. and you can see that our levels max and average are below five. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the message there is the levels currently in the uh, tap water are very low compared to the proposed standards. Now these are proposed and uh, New Hampshire DES is taking comments on those proposed levels. There are uh, folks out there that uh, believe these limits are too high. And uh, in the legislature, a bill has been proposed to direct uh, DES to set lower limits mm -hmm. on the order of uh, 13 for PFNA, PFO, and PFOS. You can see that we're below, our maxes and averages are below those levels. And then uh, a, a total of 20 uh, parts per trillion for five PFAS compounds. Mm -hmm. And w when you add uh, the average levels of those five compounds together, we come out around five yeah. compared to the, the legislative proposal. So the levels in uh, the Hampton uh, drinking water are very low compared to uh, where DES plans to set the uh, enforceable limit for drinking water and even compared to the uh, legislative proposal. Now that bill uh, has not been passed. We don't know if it's going to pass or not. We don't know if the numbers are going to change. That's the mm -hmm. legislative track. The regulatory track is this and we don't know where they're going to come out. But uh, as we go through the year and give our quarterly updates, we'll be updating you on the status of both of those tracks and how our water compares to whatever the limit is that has been uh, either proposed or by the end of the year finalized. Any questions? Mrs. Wellesley? Is well six still being tested, John? Is well six online? It's offline. Offline. Uh, we only use so it. So it's not included in? Uh, no, the, the it is. Um, Well, six is offline roughly nine months a year now. So that's, a, is that the Mill Road segment that you've got on there? So the third from the left? Well, six, yes, that, that's the Mill Road uh, sample point in the yeah. distribution system. So well, six is <coughs> represented uh, in the uh, year and a half in the two summer periods. Yeah. So the, the, the high green bars there yeah. for Exeter, Mill Road, and Maple Road. Yeah. That is reflective of the presence of well six in the mixture, but it's okay. only on for two and a half, three months a year now in the summer. So it's not go it's not online yet. It's offline nine months a year. Right. Okay. Including right now. Right now. Yep. And how about well twenty two? Have you have, is that finally on? No, Carl, we, uh, we. I'll get to that a little bit later. But Carl's we, we expect to that. submit the permit for that by the end of the month. You, but you're still testing on it. Are you finding any contamination or any salinity in that as you test it? Uh, nothing in the way of salinity. There are a few trace levels of PFAS because okay. you find it everywhere. Because that's a deep well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Really okay. Deep well. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Thank you, John. I bet you have nightmares about graphs and charts. Mr. <laughs> Waddell. Yeah. Thank you, uh, John. And I, I think it's important for the public to know that you guys are staying a, a, ahead of this, that you're mm -hmm. very proactive yeah. on this, and that you also are staying up with the science on what's going on with this rather than just overreacting mm -hmm. to something. And that people really should be aware that they, their drinking water is well, well within the safety zone. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, that you, that yeah. you're right on top of this situation, which is good. Also, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you for uh, coming for your update. We appreciate it. Okay. Well, we're only about halfway yeah. through. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <so. laughs> well, I think, uh, John, you want to go to the next one? Uh, so, as you're aware, we've been doing some testing to, to try and figure out if, uh, if, like, regulations do drive the need to, to remove PFAS. We sort of have some idea of what, what we're going to do. It seems unlikely at this point, unless the Proposed regulations are really low, but there's a lot of science to be developed on yeah. this. So yeah. even if DES sets some fairly high levels, you know, this year, 
in the coming years they may go down. So, wow. so we're, we've been doing this pilot uh, program. John, if you could show the rest of the slide, please. Um, just looking at a couple of different ways. GAC is a way of removing PFAS. Ion exchange is another system. We did a bench scale test. We, we did a pilot scale. Uh, we are doing a pilot scale test. We started last year, ran it for a while, got some good data, and we had the money. We decided to extend it, um, and that's that's still the case. Um, can go to the next slide. Uh, if you do, but could I ask one? It's probably a dumb question. What is ion exchange? It's um, <clears throat> basically the, there's a, a type of media that will absorb the PFAS, basically replaces it with other ions that are in the media. So it's... Um, well, the media, you mean dirt? Well, no, it's not really dirt. It's actually a carbon-based uh, resin. Resin is really the proper term. Oh, um, okay. It's similar it's, to a hardness removal unit right. where you exchange calcium for sodium. Yep, just oh, okay. on a different okay. scale. So. Anyway, the next slide just shows what the pilot looks like. Mm -hmm. The dark tubes, you know, these are two-inch clear plastic tubes, so the dark is carbon, and the, uh, the pale tan is, is the resin. Mm. Um, so if you go to the next slide, please. This is the same data we presented in January, just so in case you um, don't remember what the numbers are. So if we do have to go to treatment, there is definitely going to be some, um, some expense, both on the capital side and the operating side. The reason we're extending the pilot study is to get better information on how these media perform mm -hmm. because if it, if it comes that we actually got to actually design a system and put it into place, that will be really handy to, to narrow down, especially the operating side of these costs. Wow. So, um, so I, I think we're trying to be prepared for that day if it comes, but, but it may not. Hmm. Okay, that's the last we have to say about PFAS. Uh, okay. So. Just a quick date on other uh, capital projects. Um, we've been working on some tre treatment upgrades, um, consolidation of our wells out of Mill Road. You know, that got sort of um, stalled because of the neighbor made an appeal on the building permit. That, that has gone to the Supreme Court, and you know, the court legal system operates at its own pace, so we're just in a waiting mode for that. And then we also need, need to do some treatment upgrades, uh, Little River Road for well seven and for well 22. That's sort of on hold until we, we get our permit in and get some sense of really what kind of volume we're gonna to have to treat mm -hmm. out of 22. We may not get everything we asked for, or we may, and we'll factor in the water quality um, factors of that. And as I mentioned, well 22, we'll get the permit in by the end of the month at this point, <coughs> and um, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get that in three or four months. And yeah. major main replacement project down along Route yeah. 101. Yeah. Uh, Bids going out in the next week or so. Good. Um, assuming it comes in at a reasonable price, uh, then we'll probably start construction mm -hmm. probably in May. And uh, it will be a summer project. Um, we'll have the contractor do his best not to impair the, the beach traffic on 101, but mm -hmm. the main is pretty much off the side of the road. It's, there's a fairly wide berm down there. Yeah. We think we can do it without a significant impact on traffic. There's a few other projects, main replacement projects that we, we have in the works. I think last time we mentioned the project down in the uh, Gentian Meadow Pond and Green Street. Mm -hmm. We've uh, gonna probably are going to make an attempt to, to partner with the town, trying to do storm drains uh, at the same time, get some synergies um, from uh, from uh, that kind of partnership. Mm -hmm. And next slide, please. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Mark Voice to talk about <laughs> our uh, new tank project. Good evening. Thank you, Carl. So. Um, I don't have any slides to present, so we'll use this one as our visual uh, reference. This is the Exeter uh, mm -hmm. tank located on uh, Falcon, um, Falcon Circle. Right. Built in 1983, it holds 750,000 gallons of water. Yeah. Uh, one of uh, my jobs uh, for Aquarion is managing the uh, storage tank uh, maintenance program. Part of that program is uh, routinely to inspect <laughs> all of our water storage tanks mm -hmm. and assess um, their need for rehabilitation and painting as well as the storage needs for the water system that they are in okay. and if warranted um, assess the replacement of a tank if it gets too old or too expensive to uh, to rehabilitate mm. In this case, uh, the Exeter tank uh, qualifies for both a rehab and repainting, okay. 
but when we, um, my group worked with Carl and his operators on how we would take the tank offline uh, for maintenance, it became clear we did not have enough storage of water in the water system to meet all of our needs for both the consumptive use, irrigation, and most importantly, fire protection. Mm. So the project then turned a, a corner to looking at how much storage is needed to replace the tank during the time it's maintained, as well as the long-term needs for the community and our water system. So at this point, we engaged a consultant to do an alternative analysis on uh, what the storage needs would be for the community, what options might be available for uh, meeting that storage need, both during the time that the tank is offline for painting, mm. and then of course permanently, and where could we consider um, getting additional storage. So we um, have uh, completed an alternative analysis study that indicates um, that the existing um, uh, Falcone Circle property is the best uh, site out of a group of locations that we looked at to host a redundant second mm -hmm. water tank that would be built adjacent to the original. Yeah. Once that new tank is built, we would immediately take the older tank offline to do rehab and painting. And when we're done, we'll have enough storage to meet all the needs for today into the future, as well as provide um, the fire department with um, the assurances and reliability that they need uh, during times of emergencies. So we are in the design stage right now of the site, doing some site planning. We have reached out to the most immediate neighbors and we will be very quickly uh, meeting with the neighbors, uh, introducing them to the project, much the way we're doing here, more on a personal level solicit some feedback from them. We'll take that feedback, my, uh, you know, adopt what we can in our site planning, and then we'll meet with the planning and zoning staff to uh, move forward into the formal permit process. From a timing perspective, it's a little early to know how long all of this will take. We know we probably have uh, probably four to six months of a total uh, design and permitting process ahead of us. So uh, we'll immediately get in touch with our neighbors, do some outreach, and uh, I would propose maybe at the next quarterly update, we'll have a lot more um, mm. to share with you, including a couple of slides. Sure. Yeah. That's all I had for you. What's next? Are you finished, uh, Carl? I think we have one more slide. Yeah. I think it's just a uh, yeah, reminder slash invitation to our environmental champions yeah. event on Thursday, May 9th at the Victoria Okay. Hope you can come. Questions, Mary Louise? Yes. The uh, how long, once you go through the permitting process, et cetera, how long will it take for the actual construction of the brand new water storage tank? If, if the project starts before a winter cold period, you know, yeah. uh, probably nine to ten months, but we budget a full year, oh, a full okay. construction year. You have to account for um, uh, you know, the rainy season, uh, ha having a slow time developing mm -hmm. the site. Mm -hmm. uh, but we budget for 12 months. We hope to do it faster, but we think it'll be a full year. This may be a stupid question, but the tank is like a great big pipe or whatever it is. Is, is it put together in sections on site as you're building it, or do you have a truck bring in this big, long... It, we That's actually probably a stupid question. No, it's it's a very good question. It's it's made of welded steel, so the steel comes in sections uh, referred to as plates, and the pedestal on the Exeter tank mm -hmm. is what we refer to as a dry pedestal. Mm -hmm. The water is not in the pedestal. The water is right. only stored above it. So the dry pedestal are, are brought in in uh, curved pieces and it's put together welded. Yeah. And then uh, some tank builders will build the entire water chamber on the ground oh. and hoist it up with a crane wow. and place it on top. Ooh. Some tank builders will build from within the pedestal, they'll put a derrick crane that picks up the pieces of steel and builds 
the water chamber around it ah. and then just brings with one large crane just the roof section. Um, we refer to that as means and methods and we don't know, we don't, we don't dictate uh, all of the how that a contractor uses. Yeah. Um, but those are two very classic ways to build a tank. You're probably going to have a big audience when you start doing that. It's amazing. Mr. Waddell. All set. All set. Thank you. Um, when you mentioned um, about the water line on 101, uh, what is it? You phrase it as if it comes in at a good price. What if it doesn't come in at a good price? Well, then we have to make the choice <laughs> to do it or not. You know, it's so it's not official if you're going to definitely do it to begin with. Uh, well, I think it's really unlikely that it's going to be you know excessively expensive. But you know, until you get a bid and get some numbers in, you yeah. really don't know for sure. And yeah. if we think it's going to cost, pick a number, you know, a million dollars, and it comes in at three, well, yeah. you know, then you got to mm -hmm. step back and reevaluate. So, That's just great. just a contingency. Well, you know, thank you for great. coming in. Great. Yeah. Just uh, when if you do get to that project, and it is in the summer. We got to be very cognizant of Church Street being the only way out, and obviously Highland Ave. But you're going to be going down Church Street, yep. And the effect that has on both the church and the businesses and the and the people that live in that area, yep. <clears throat> you're right in the middle of the summer at a hard time. It's. Uh, yep. I know they had a hard enough time when the uh, the sewer line was getting put in, so we got to make sure that we hear yep. those people. Like the in expectation that area. on the contractor is not to interfere with. With mm -hmm. traffic, especially egress, you know, if something comes up yeah. and a lot, of people got to leave the beach in a hurry. We yeah. definitely don't want to cause a bottle. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yep. well, thank you very much for coming in this evening. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Good deal. Moving on um, to the town manager's report, Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, I think this is important for people who own property in town. Uh, if you wish to apply for elderly, veterans, blind, or other town exemptions, as well as the Hampton Beach precinct exemption from the entertainment portion of the precinct tax. You should remember that applications for exemptions close next Monday, April 15th at 5 p.m. Please inquire of the, select, of the uh, assessor's office for the proper forms to make your application. And there are forms required for each of these, and they need to be filled out, and there's information that needs to come with those forms when they're returned. So we don't want anybody to miss out on this. You've only got a week left. Yeah. Work will be starting on the construction. In fact, the forms are up today uh, for the foundations of the new bridge to support the Route 101 Tide Mill Creek crossing for the new sewer force mains. The bridging is expected to arrive uh, in May for installation and completion of the force main connections to place the system in operation after proper testing. Residents should be aware of the fact that there, is, there are no spring pickup for leaves and branches. This was a one-year program authorized by the Board of Selectmen in 2018 due to the several large numbers of spring storms uh, for that particular year. Materials may be taken to the transfer station during operational hours. Please be aware the transfer station will only be open until 11 a.m. on Sundays. That's a change. Engineering work has started on the design and permitting for the replacement of culverts on Park Avenue. Construction is expected to begin uh, after the close of school for this, for this summer. Please do not place in your recycling any plastic bags of any kind. That costs a lot of extra money for the town and for you as taxpayers. Mm. The tax collector's office will be closed on Wednesday, April 17th for the annual spring training with the state of New Hampshire. And Mr. Chairman, I have a couple of other things here. I think you already mentioned these, but um, the Board of Selectmen will be discussing beach commercial waste on April 15th here in this room. And the Selectmen will also be discussing condominium waste on April 22nd again in this room. Uh, we received today a, a, a letter from Waste Management Company. I think everybody who watched last week <clears throat> Uh, we sort of indicated to the board, indicated and approved uh, certain changes in the uh, wastewater, or the uh, excuse me, the uh, waste uh, waste plant, the uh, take care of our solid waste and our, our uh, materials from the solid waste facility. Mm -hmm. We just received a 3.5 percent change in the current rate uh, for 
uh, tonnage at the transfer station and for uh, materials, sludge materials taken out of the wastewater treatment plant. We expect to get the same type of rate increase uh, for material that is contaminated uh, in the recycling area. These rates are all effective July 1, 2019, and they may not be added to the uh, default budget by statute until the statute is changed by the legislature. Mm. We also received a letter today from the State of New Hampshire Department of Transportation. They are going to do major repairs for ADA compliance on all the sidewalks on um, Route 1A from Epping Avenue to Cusack Road and from Cusack back to Nutt Avenue, a total of 5.8 miles on their, on their uh, sidewalks. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Okay, questions for the town manager's report? Mrs. Wolseley. Yes, uh, Fred, the um, ambulance repairs, do we have any kind of update on our smashed up ambulance? Is that on the town manager's no. report? That's under old business, Mrs. Wolseley, so you can bring that up then. Any other questions for the town manager's report? Yes, do we have an idea whether turnout gear has been That's another thing ordered? that's not on the town manager's report. Do you any questions on the town manager's report? Mr. Yeah. Wardell? Uh, you said there was a 3.2% increase? 3.5%. 3.5. And we're in a current contract with them, too, right? But we are, and that's, that's in the contract. That's in the contract. It is. Uh, I'd like to say it's not because I don't want to pay it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because it comes out of our, our taxpayers' money, and I think that's a, something that we shouldn't have to pay. But... Uh, the legislature last year also legislated that we can't put that money in the default budget. We know it's there. It's in the contract. It's going to come effective July 1 each year. Uh. Uh, to give you an idea on tonnage, um, we've gone from uh, $70.60 per ton to $73.07 per ton. And uh, on the other facilities, we have $77.01 to $79.71 per ton. So these rates are effective July 1. And I'm sure that we'll rece be receiving other rates for recycling material that's contaminated. Probably the same percentage cost. Wow. Okay, and the other thing is engineering work has started on the design and permitting of the replacement culverts on, on Park Avenue? Yes, sir. They so have. do we have any timeline on when that's going to take place or anything? We expect to be doing that shortly after the close of school this year. We've asked them to expedite it. We want to get in. We want to get out. We don't want to be in anybody's way because it's a major arterial road in town. Yeah. And, of course, we have the pig roast on August 25th, so we yeah. need to be out of there before then. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. All set. Thank you. Okay. okay can we backtrack? Um, uh, yes. Because Fred just brought up the price increase. I'm assuming that this is relevant to what we're going to discuss next week as far as the waste Perhaps, and the weight and the weight of the bottles and so forth. Fred, will that have some kind of, you know, it will increase our costs, and we want to try to pull back on the weight. We will. Well, pulling back on the weight means we have to do something with material. There's no other thing we can do with material except take it to the transfer station and dispose of it either in recycling or uh, up at the um, Turnkey Landfill in Rochester. Uh, the problem with the with the the process is that right now we pay on every ton delivered, we pay a uh, twenty-five percent of each, uh, five twenty percent of each of the, the truckloads delivered to the recycling facility. We pay a one hundred and eighty dollar fee as a penalty for having contaminated waste. That's one hundred and eighty dollars per ton. That's uh, twice what we put, more than twice what we pay to take it to Turnkey. But we are obligated by the contract. Right to take all that recycling to Bill Ricca, where it's processed. And that's one of the reasons I ask people, please do not put your recycling in a bag. Immediately, once that's in a bag, and we take it to Rochester, excuse me, to Bill Ricca, yeah. that's contamination. Right. That goes against us, and we pay $180 a ton for that material. Yeah. But paying by the ton, we're talking about bottles, which are heavy, right? So if we put them in... As long as they're separate in the, in the recycling cart and they're not bagged up, uh, we won't be paying for those. Well, that's, we'll be paying for the weight. We'll be paying for the weight for penalty. The problem is people have been putting them in plastic bags yeah. okay. and putting them in the recycling cart. 
And that, once they do that, the process they go through, I should explain the process a little bit. Twice a year, <clears throat> they take samples of the material that's brought to the, to the Bill Ricca facility. Right. And they, they manage that by going through it. They do five separate samples. And they, they take out all the contaminated material. If you have a, a large plastic bag and it's full of recyclables, when they take that out, that's all trash. That, that, mm -hmm. that, that right. can't be recycled because they refuse to open the bag. It's not supposed to be there. They're not going to sort it for you. They're not going to sort it for you. That's going to go in the pile for contamination. They weigh the material that's involved uh, and determine how much material there is and what, what percentage of the load it is. We're allowed to have 5% contamination without penalty. We're, we're averaging right now 25%. Uh, so until sometime in May or June, we're going to pay $180 for every 20 tons that comes on a tr comes on a 20 percent of the tonnage that comes on a truck. Recycling. For recycling, whether it's recyclable material or not, if it's bagged up, that's where the principal problem is. Right. The other thing is people are putting regular trash in the recycling carts, and that of course is completely contaminated in the cart, and it also contaminates the load that goes in the truck. Yeah. Okay. So Fred, good, as we, uh, Jen said last year, when in doubt, throw it out. That's it. If, it's, if, you, if you think it even might be garbage, throw it in the garbage, unless it's that. And the other thing is, they can put it in bags, paper bags. Right. So if you, if, if you, have, if you have to put something in a bag, put it in a paper bag and right. put it in with your recycling. Because the paper is recyclable. The paper is recyclable. Plastic is not. Right. But what I'm trying to get at here is that the glass is recyclable, but I'm concerned about the weight. Even if you have nice um, recycling carts and nobody's putting plastic bags in them, the greater the volume of glass, the more we're going to pay, right? No. As, when we have contaminated waste, they, they derive a percentage of the contaminated waste in this particular case for Hampton is 25 percent the last audit they did so we're allowed to have five percent so for 20 percent of each load that goes to the recycling facility we pay 180 dollars a ton yeah. period yeah. doesn't matter and once they do the audit that's it we're, we're done we're stuck with that for six months okay. at the end of six months they'll do another audit let me kind of give you an idea we we don't take material off the beach that's in the recycling carts for recycling. Right. Uh, two years ago, we started this process, and we had re we had contamination that was just off the chart. And what we did is we did a one-week experiment, and they pulled the material for us at the end of that one week. And our recycling went from better than 50% to less than 5% oh, yeah. by not taking the material at the beach and the recycling carts and make that we made that stuff trash. Mm -hmm. So it went someplace else. Yeah. So it's important that people are very careful about what they put in the carts. Now, it's very difficult to do that on Ocean Boulevard where you have mm -hmm. a lot of people coming into town and they're, they're going back and forth and purchasing things and getting rid of things that they bring with them mm -hmm. and they throw them in the barrels. Yeah. Sometimes they throw them in the recycling barrels and that contaminates that and that's where that waste comes I'm from. Sure so we're trying to find a way to solve that problem in the summertime. So at the beach, we do not, and the state does not so, so separate the recycling on their facility, even though they're required to by law. So we, we take that material as trash. But it saves us a lot of money. Again, right. it gets back to education of that's the people correct. that do it. And I think yeah. that's one of the things you were gonna see highlight next week is how, how can we do that education? That's correct. And how can we make it better? Yeah. But, but once again, I'm just, and I try to be really careful with the recycling, but my recycling weight is going to go up with glass. And I, instead glass of the- Glass is glass, though. It's, Everybody, it's everywhere. I know that. That's so what I'm trying to get at. So but, but, you know, so if, if otherwise, I just have cat food cans in there. But, and at least those are recyclable. But, uh, I'm concerned about the glass from here on out with what we're hearing about the changes. As long as glass continues to be accepted within the recycling market, it we're okay. But the weight. There has been, well, weight's really Weight, in, weight, glass is heavy. I'm aware of that. Yeah. 
the right now waste management and their their vendors continue to take glass and glass is disposable it's yes. it's it's recyclable yes what hurts us is getting contaminated waste mixed in with the glass so that the glass cost goes to 180 dollars a ton oh okay that's what we're trying to eliminate gotcha. if we eliminate the contamination we don't pay them anything for the recycling right. that comes saying. off of your taxes mm -hmm. and we don't want it to come off of your taxes okay i see what you're saying now is there um any considerations especially when we talk next week about raising um the prices uh you know the the regular fees that go into like let's say business people that bring dropping it to the um, transfer at station the transfer station the commercial we charge by the the pound so to yeah. speak it's broken down to the pound because people bring small amounts ah. um, all of the commercial vendors in town that come to the transfer station pay for all of their waste that's tipped mm -hmm. and it's paid based upon the average of what we pay mm -hmm. so we we, we restudy that at least once a year sometimes twice a year and if we see a change we bring it to the board and you have to approve it by statute so we are up to 10 cents a pound for everything that goes into the, the transfer station except residential waste you're allowed to have 1,000 pounds a day in residential waste for no charge. That's in your regulations. Commercial waste is all paid for. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what about on your report, you talked about the sidewalks. Could you go into detail about that? Uh, all of the sidewalks on Route 1A are owned by the state, and they say so in their letter. Uh, that's been sort of a bone of contention over the years to figure out who owns them. The state now indicates they own them in their letter. Well, they are they are going to comply with ADA requirements, and I think that's a good idea. It, it, it really doesn't hurt at all. They're going to do tip downs at every intersection, and they're going to do uh, truncated uh, covers so people will know with visual impairment that they're at a point where they're going to cross a road. Mm. It's, it's basically a bubble concrete type pavement. Um, they're going to do that for all the properties from... I think I said it was Epping, Epping, Epping. Avenue all mm -hmm. the way up to High Cusack. Street and then and, yeah. and, and to Cusack and then all the way back mm -hmm. to uh, Nutt Avenue. Yeah. So that's all the state sidewalks. All the rest of them are town sidewalks on on, on the other streets. So. So uh, that does that mean if there are potholes in the middle of the sidewalk, they're going to fix those? They didn't say that. They just <laughs> said handicapped accessibility. I'm hoping they're going to fix everything, yeah. simply <laughs> because we don't want to have an accident. They. If people have disability, visual disability, having a pothole in the middle of a sidewalk is not exactly ADA compliant. Mm. So I would yeah. hope they would fix all those. Like I noticed when I took a walk today, uh, or yesterday, that the sidewalks, um, at least all in the Boar's Head area, all have uh, spray paint in different colors gas lines, sewer, oh. all of the things that yeah. are um, not flush with the ground or marked. Mm -hmm. um, does that have something to do with this? It may have something to do with the engineering that's involved in this. It may also have something to do with the engineering to do redo Route 1A. That's what I was curious of. Yeah, because obviously those are two major engineering things. They're going to do this year the ADA handicapped accessibility requirements, which is very good. Uh, but in doing that, they'll probably obtain a lot of information from surveying uh, to look mm -hmm. towards the reconstruction of the roadway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. Rick, yeah. On that subject, and you know better than any of us, the mess on the drainage next to the sidewalks and, and the road and stuff, it, is this going to have, is this going to interfere in any way? Or they'll sooner or later, I guess, in some century, they'll have to do drainage up there. Will will putting the new sidewalks in be an impediment to clearing up that drainage? The I, drainage is going to be done, isn't it, when they do the uh, when they redo the roadway? The road. Yeah, they're and not what? talking about replacing the sidewalks. They're merely talking about putting making them handicapped accessible, which is certain sections of the sidewalks. They come in so with the federal gonna, requirements. So they're not going to rip up the sidewalks and put new no. ones in? Oh, okay. No. I misunderstood no. that. No, no. Moving, wish they were, but they're not. Moving um, to uh, uh, old business, um, Christina put down selectman goals. Would anyone like to talk about any of the goals 
I'll repeat of what they are. One is trash and recycling. Two is default budget. Three is work with the state. Four is crumbling infrastructure. Five is the 220 budget, 2020 budget. Six is flooding. Seven is goals and objectives of three major departments. And eight is communications between the board. Did we talk about that last week? Well, she, yeah. she's put it on here again. Yeah, yeah, so, is there anything you'd like to add? I don't have anything. Okay, Rusty. Mm -hmm. All set. Mary Louise, did you want to go on to your old business that you mentioned earlier? Yes. Um, do we know yet whether we have any update on the fire department ambulance that the state truck smashed up? No. We do have some information, but it's, it's sketchy because they're going to have to uh, send it to a special vendor, uh, and I believe that's already been done, and they'll, I should have a report sometime this week as to what's going on. Uh, if the frame is bent, it is going to take months. Why can't the state reimburse frame. us? I mean, if, if this is in such state, state, has state must have insurance. State has insurance, and it goes through a, a formal claim process. And uh, it's like anything else. If your car is, is, is hurt, your personal car is hurt, you file your, file your insurance claim, and your insurance company moves at a certain pace. Our insurance company is ready to go because we weren't. We were hit. We we yes. we didn't hit anybody. So uh, we have a thousand dollar deductible for repairs on our vehicle. The rest of it's off off their insurance company. But it has to be done, and they have to do it correctly. So it may take a few weeks. It may take several months. Well, I'm afraid of that because with the tourist season coming up on us here, and we'll be short one ambulance. I'm really annoyed on that, but that's all right. Nobody cares. Um, the, do we have anything uh, update on the turnout gear in the fire department? The uh, fund was set up. Do you know how close we are to filling in some? I've asked the fund to be set up. Yeah. I have uh, asked it to be sent to the supervisor, the, the town trustees, and I've asked uh, that the process be started on paperwork to start the ordering of the individual uniforms for the men. Excellent. May we have a printout of that eventually when? You know, it's, it's going to be a long process because each one's individually fitted. Right, so but we it's, need. It's going to be a process we're going to be going through. I want to for see that we're actually, months. yeah, getting it done. Excellent. And uh, I mentioned this before, and I'd like to mention it again because I think it would be very worthwhile for this board or any other board to take advantage of the NHMA's uh, seminar on assessing. I, I think I don't know what I should know on the assessing process, and I think it would help. Every board, not just not just this board, if once a year the NHMA would send down whoever's available to give uh, a board of selectmen, and I'd love to get that done this year to help us. I think assessing is probably one of the most confusing, uh, puzzling uh, things that have to be done in the town. And if they're willing to give us a free seminar, I will be delighted to uh, to take it. I can inquire, Mr. Chairman. Okay. How does everyone else feel about that? Mr. Waddell? I don't feel you need it. Okay. All set. Uh, yeah. I feel like I know enough about it. What about, is it possible for the selectmen to go there and get some information? I okay. will check with them and to find out what the mm -hmm. process is so that you can either go or they can come. That's I'll good. get you both pieces of information. Okay, great. Thank you. Good. Can I just yeah. like to make a correction? I don't know if I misheard something or not, but somebody said nobody cares. Everybody cares about the ambulance. The fire department cares about the ambulance. All the selectmen care about the ambulance. But they, in the town, town manager, the assistant town manager, care about the ambulance. They know that it's good. It's a process that has to go through, and everybody's worried about how long it will take and what yeah. we'll do. Well, so I think that's a misstatement on the part of somebody on this Conk board. Conk is not knocking themselves out to fix mm -hmm. it. Do you do have any other old business, um, Mr. Waddell? No, I do not. All set, Thank Mr. Bridal. Okay. Um, and next, we move on to new business. The first one we have is a waiver of fees for future wastewater treatment projects. Mr. Chairman, uh, Public Works approached me the other day. As you know, we're about to begin work on the wastewater treatment plant. We have a very large proposal to do work down there mm. that was approved by town meeting. Yeah. And uh, the request is, and I, I certainly endorse the request, 
is to waive the fees for building permits and electrical permits mm -hmm. and so forth for our own wastewater treatment plant, yeah. rather than charging us that and putting it on the appropriation, which <laughs> doesn't make, make a motion that we waive the fees. For I'll, the second I'll second that. Oh, All right. those in favor? Yeah. Unanimous. Good idea, Fred. Um, next, we have retired ambulance manual stretchers to surplus for donation. Could you fill us in on that? I would, Mr. Chairman. We have, we have a couple of old uh, stretchers for the uh, ambulance that are, in fact, surplus. We don't use them anymore. Hmm. Um, we have received a request uh, from, yeah, I got it. Uh, New England Dragway. Yeah, wow. it's New England Dragway, you're correct. Oh. Wow. Uh, to purchase those, those two uh, for virtually nothing. Uh, but it saves us $50 each. It saves us from having to trash them. Oh, yeah. uh, and that's we'll pay good. more than the $50 to get rid of them if we have to put yeah. them through uh, oh, recycling and trash. I make that motion. And is there a second? second? All those in favor? Unanimous. Does that give us a feel for what happens at the dragway? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Next is approval of sellback of unused vacation and sick time for police department employee. We have an employee, Mr. Chairman, who is going to uh, retire <clears throat> early next year, but has a payback request. Uh, we're going to fund this anyhow at some point in time, and we have the money to do it. Uh, my suggestion is that we hold that until the end of the year. So ah. that we have, uh, we know we have proper funds in, in the account. Mm -hmm. We do have uh, funds put aside, almost uh, 500, more than $500,000 if we should run over the account. So we, we have plenty of backup to, to do this, but we will pay this money out at some point in time. It's just been requested to be done before 2020 mm -hmm. yeah. to pay off obligations by this employee. Yeah. And um, we need your permission to do that. Yeah. Do we, so we need an approval? Yes, sir, you I do. I mean, a, a motion? Yes. Do you need an approval to do it or approval to hold off till fall? Well, both are implied. We're not going to pay it now. We'll pay it in the fall. Uh, but we will pay it because we're going to have to pay it anyhow. It's a right. part of the, the ordinance. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, any new business? Mrs. Wolseley? Not public, no. Yeah. No one over there? Um, one, uh, this might have been under all business, but it's also <laughs> new business this week. Uh, we forgot when we were having a discussion about the um, ballots that everything was done. The one thing that we didn't discuss and uh, was about that article that was, uh, I guess it was one of the very last ones about the smoking. Someone oh, Mr. brought Caro's that to articles. my attention. Yeah. yeah. So, what can you tell us about that? Town passed it. It will be in the ordinance. Um, I think we need to try to work with it. Uh, I'm sure we'll receive some complaints. We'll try to work our way through it to see what, how it can be administered if it can be. Uh, it's the first time any town has done this. Um, so we'll just. I think it's a work in progress. I don't think it's something we're just going to send people out and just mm -hmm. arrest everybody that's got a cigarette. That's just not, mm -hmm. or give them a ticket. You know, it's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think we need to be careful about what we do and how we do it. We need to study this and see what happens. Mrs. Wolseley? In light of that, Fred, could we put signage or ask the state to put signage um, on their beaches? Just, you know, do not discharge, do not uh, throw cigarette butts and whatever are on the sand or on the beach or well, the, that's that's certainly a, you know contamination but this doesn't we, deal with the state beach. that's correct and the second of all didn't we ha have last week that we reduced our sign budget yes for we only did. emergency yep uh oh well and the other part is this vaping stuff which is totally nutty to me but that you're not getting ashes all over the place but you've got some degree, I would assume, of air contamination if you've got people doing that. Yeah, on the but beach. the ordinance doesn't address that. No. Yeah. We, um, okay. you know, we have enough to do with our joint operation 
Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Plan yes. That we're going to just stick to uh, the things that yeah. affect yeah. us. When are we going back to that JOP plan? Do you know, Mr. Chairman? We're waiting to have a return from their letter, right, Mr. Welch? We are, and I've asked, I'm going to be asking Public Works tomorrow when I meet with them to uh, <coughs> meet with the staff at the beach. We have, we think we have a proposal that will remove the, um, the sand from the material they pick up on the beach with the cleaning machines so that it could be dumped directly into the transfer station and they could be built directly for it rather than having those dumpsters down there on uh, Route 1A, mm. which stink to high heaven. So we, we'd like to get that. rid of that because a bad influence in the community. It looks bad coming into town, uh, and they are not exactly fragrant, <laughs> at least nicely fragrant. Uh, they are fragrant in a way, um, but it would, be, it would be beneficial to them and to mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. and we would be paid for the actual cost. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ideally, there should be nothing that has to be raked up on the beach except for seaweed and an occasional seal. Well, mm -hmm. unfortunately, that doesn't happen. Right. Um, and Mark, did you have something? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, if the board would entertain a motion to go into a non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon three Roman two small e litigation. I'll so move, Mr. Chairman. I'll second, aye. 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 Thank At you. Time. You can tell me. It's at uh, 8 2010. 2010. Thanks. Okay. And um, closing comments? It's not on You'll there. be back in public session we'll briefly, back. but yeah. sure. Okay. Thank you. And thank you, 22. Yes. Thank you.